so when you look at again, we're we're seeing the same story again and again. But look at the time spent per app category, and 47 percent, just right next to social networking, is uh, spent on games. <clears throat> So this is that statistic about, you know, if you take the open web, you take Facebook, and then you even take the mobile web, the, you know, the Safari browser on your iPhone or whatever, and you add it all up together, really to stack the, you know, the odds against, even then, the minutes being spent in applications has now eclipsed. And this has happened in a, in a period of time that I think is quite surprising. This, this trend has been going on all throughout 2011. So it's been like, you know, the gap's been growing and growing. And then all of a sudden in Q4, late 2011, just a huge jump up in terms of minutes being spent in, in applications. I want to spend a minute on this one. This one's really important. So um, really interesting statistic for you. Uh, about 55% of the world's DS purchasers are women. About 45, 48% of all the iOS, or iOS is the name we're going to use for all Apple products, iPad, iPod Touch, etc. So about 45 to 48%, depending on the product um, of those products, are women. Um, only 25% of Sony PSP, so those the Sony gaming are women. But you know. 55% member of DS purchasers are women, and, and they're a hugely important demographic when it comes to web-based gaming, yet only 1% of the game developers in the world are women. So you go into these uh, retail stores like GameStop, and you'll see all these titles, and then you'll see these women's titles that are on the bottom row out of like 12 rows, and it makes no sense. It's out of whack relative to the economy. This is mega opportunity for, you know, any studios that are targeting this demographic, I think that, you know, we could, we could have five startups in Toronto alone and all they do is service the female demographic in a different way in mobile and all of them, there's enough ocean for all those fish to swim type of thing. Super important category, way underappreciated because there's no women game developers. Like, you know, what's funny is that we're hiring 15 people right now, 14 I think, at XMG and when it comes to, um, we don't need to use headhunters because we're, we're lucky that we get a flood of applications for some of these postings. But if we want to go get a female game developer, we got to hire a headhunter. So, you know, something to think about. Here's a, an interesting graph which shows you the prices people are willing to pay for apps. So you see for games, people are, you know, willing to pay a lesser amount. But medical, $7, people, you know, people are very willing to pay for medical applications. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, that later on. Now here's an interesting statistic that will give everyone perspective. So in the history of the game industry, in the all-time history, the number one selling title of all times is Super Mario Bros. And it's really been driven off of the DS titles and the predecessors and so on of the, of the Mario franchise. And they've just sold 225 million copies over 25 years. And if you go to Wikipedia, they'll see, you'll see a ranking of all-time unit sales and there's Super Mario Bros right on the top. Number three I think is uh, an interesting one. It's about brain development. So um, I'll get back to that in a second. And now Angry Birds, Angry Birds has had 600 million downloads in just under three years. Talk about perspective. So the all time biggest hit 25 years and then versus three years and Angry Birds is going to completely blow away that 225 number. They'll be in the billions of units over time because People are downloading multiple copies of Angry Birds. They're downloading one for their TV. They're downloading one for, you know, their, their tablet, one for their smartphone. It's like, you know, those guys are just touching, 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 right? Now, I, I, did, I did mean to touch on this earlier and I forgot. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch on this, this dramatic, I think this is a very dramatic piece of information. So while that's in the background, I just wanted to touch on, on, on brain development and when it comes to games. Because if you're a mother or father in the audience, you probably have heard a lot of stuff about games and its influence on children. And I would, you know, like to say straight up that, you know, mature and, and violent video games for young kids, that doesn't make any sense. I totally, I think that everyone here would agree that if a kid shouldn't be watching a restricted movie, then they shouldn't be playing restricted video games. And it just sends the, all the wrong messages. And I think it's just a common sense thing. I don't think we even need to point to a lot of research to get over that hump. Now, the other aspect about games, though, is that games are phenomenal for your mind. You know, there's a, just a coincidentally a study today, I think it was in the Post, about the White House, you know, embarking on a big program to research brain development and games. 
And if you look at a game like Angry Birds, it's not just about flicking the bird. Well, it is, but you know, there's a subtler aspect. Well, you have to understand the physics of all the different objects within the game ecosystem. And you have to know what is the optimal way to kind of use your, like, economize your assets, your birds, <laughs> whatever it might be, but in this case it's birds against the pigs, right? And so there's a puzzle aspect within this game that's right in the background, whether you know it or not. So there's, there's aspects to brain development. I did mention that the number three selling title of all time in the video game world is the Brain Age uh, franchise. So please don't think of video games as being bad for you. I would say to you, the, there's research to suggest the opposite. And like any controversial subject, there's you know, both sides to the perspective. But you know, just coincidentally, we're doing this talk today and, and there's this big hullabaloo that the White House is making about um, this topic. You can check it out. Very important graph. It's, um, <clears throat> it basically just shows you the uh, cumulative installs of uh, what's happened in the Apple and uh, Android ecosystem. So when you look at them, just those two combined, right, we're talking 20 billion downloaded applications. Now, if you're familiar with this market, you're going to say, yeah, no big deal, but I already know that type of thing. But if you're, if you're new to this and if you're, you know, it's just, this is a shocking number. Look at those graphs. And then you look at the installed bases of devices. This is, this is where we're going to start opening up our mind to like broader uh, definitions of smart devices. And, 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 that's, and that's that these basically, these two, just these two gen class of devices have 500 million installed, you know, platforms out there that if you, if you want to interpret them as a TV, hypothetically, there's 500 million TVs out there, man, and this is going to go to a billion a year. And the implications are this. There's no consumer electronics market in the world of comparable size to the cell phone market. And, it, and it, what that means is that the economies of scale are just going to chew its way through display technologies, chew its way through GPS technologies. It's already done that. You've seen it, you know, basically commoditize all these other technologies for our benefit. It's like this one market is so mega that basically, okay, we're going to, one day, I remember I was at, uh, you know, I used to go to these annual conferences and every, every year at this one in, in Europe, it would kind of project where the devices would be about two to three years out or so. And so I remember the year I went there and I, and I saw the cameras, the first cameras getting integrated, right? But it's not, the point I'm not trying to make is, oh, cameras have changed, camera phones have changed our lives. We've already written that research in the past. What's important is that look what it's done to the economies of scale of the digital camera industry overall. It's just, it's just a huge influencer when it comes to doing things like ordering massive quantities of silicon and so on. And so when you look at it from a game platform point of view, this is why Nintendo should be very, very afraid. They should be very concerned because this is their business that, that's being attacked. <clears throat>